Hi, it's Dwyer, gamblersadvisory.com, a free site, bettingangle.us, a free site. Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now, today is Wednesday, April 6, 2022. You're betting futures in the NBA. You're looking at the Western Conference. I believe there's only one question to ask, and I mean one. And that question is, can anybody in the West beat the Phoenix Suns? Sometimes it's hard to see the Goliath in the room, especially after they lost last year's NBA Finals up two games to none. Right? I get it. We look at Phoenix, we said, well, they had their shot. Is that true? Folks, right now, he's hardly mentioned, Monty Williams has done one of the best coaching jobs a coach has laid down in any sport over the last 12 months. Understand this Phoenix team already, with a few games left, has 63 wins. You know, offense slaps you in the face. Defense doesn't. You have to look at the game to figure out the advantage a team has defensively. Mikel Bridges is one of the best defenders in the National Basketball Association. DeAndre Aiden and Chris Paul are two of the best defenders at their position. Understand, Chris Paul has led the league in steals several years. So we're talking about a team that is elite defensively. They're the defending conference champions. In other words, they have experience. And by they, I mean the guys on the roster right now. Right? Not some group from 10 years ago. I'm talking about these guys. They have experience going deep in the playoffs. Something that some of the competitors, for example, the team with the second best record in the conference, the Memphis Grizzlies, doesn't have. That's going to help them. Let me also point out that as I make this video, they're running away with not just the division. They're running away with the Western Conference. They're up by eight games over the conference's second best record in Memphis. So you're talking about a defensively elite team, a playoff tested team that already has the big jump on everyone. Let's talk about the level of brilliance too. At home, wow, are they good. They're 32 wins and 8 losses at home. Again, 32 and 8. Good luck beating this team in Phoenix at home in the playoffs. But would it shock you to know that on the road they're dynamite? This is kind of like Jordan's Bulls. Right? Think about it. They're 31 wins and 8 losses on the road. 31 and 8 on the road. Speaking of Jordan's Bulls, we've been spoiled. Right? Jordan's Bulls had a lot of wins. Over 70. The Warriors went all out to beat that record. So we don't consider teams with a mere 63 wins to be elite. What I want people to do is to go back in history and find out how many teams have gotten up into the 60s. Phoenix might end the season with 64 or 65 wins, folks. They just beat a Laker team that had its season on the line, that needed to win to stay viable for the playoffs. Last night's game was a must-win game for the Lakers. Phoenix shut them down. 
Phoenix is unforgiving. Folks, as I look around the Western Conference right now, I don't see a lot of competition for Phoenix. Let's talk about the Los Angeles Clippers, a team that went deep in the playoffs last year. They're missing Kawhi Leonard. Paul George is back, but he's just getting his feet back under him. You know, Utah, for the uh, basketball analytics crowd, no longer has Joe Ingles. If you're into analytics, you know that this guy is a hidden jewel in the league. Right? The fact that he's injured, the fact that he's off the roster makes Utah not quite what they were last year. Jason Kidd has done a great job in Dallas. Great job. But Dallas might not be able to handle the pace set by Phoenix. Right? Phoenix, of course, scores more points per game than the Dallas Mavericks. Let's face it, too. Luka Doncic is not defensively blessed. Now, the Golden State Warriors, I'll concede, they're a dark horse. But they're missing their big man, Weissman. He's out for the year. Golden State is short on bigs. I'll concede. You want to have Golden State in your future's portfolio. Let's talk about Memphis. Oh my God, this is a team that's better than you think. Believe it or not, even though John Morant is one of the best players in the league, Memphis has a great record without him. And of course, Memphis has certain guys, Stephen Adams, for example, who've been deep in the playoffs. The problem is, is that this is too new for them. You got teams like Phoenix who just won the Western Conference. You got Golden State, a team that's won finals. Right? Draymond, Clay, Steph, they're still there. You don't have that with Memphis. I believe that winning an NBA title is actually a multi-year thing. You don't go from zero to 60 in the National Basketball Association. Right? Memphis hasn't gone very deep in the playoffs recently. I think that is a disadvantage for them. Denver has one of the very best players in the league. Right? I personally feel James Harden is the best player in the National Basketball Association. Twist my arm and I'll concede that Joker is probably the second best player in the league. I believe even though Joel Embiid is putting up some great numbers at center, right, scoring-wise, he's not the player Joker is. Joker is simply a different level and will continue to be a different level when it comes to passing the basketball. Right, but Denver might not be good enough defensively. Look at the numbers to hang with the Phoenixes and the Golden States, or for that matter, the Dallas Mavericks this year under Jason Kidd. Minnesota, I like Carl Anthony Towns. I think Minnesota is one of the big stories this year. But being in the playoffs and getting deep in the playoffs, that's too new. They're like Memphis. They just don't have the experience that I want to see when I'm betting futures. So to sum up this video right now, the line seems awfully short. Phoenix plus 275 to win it all. Forget the Western Conference. If you want to return on Phoenix, you need to take them to win the whole thing. Right, folks? I'm just here to tell you, based on the fact that defense never sleeps, that this team is elite defensively, that this team has guys like Devin Booker offensively, 
that this team already is in the 60s with some games to play, that this team is almost as good on the road as they are at home. If you're a gambler and you don't have some futures money on the Phoenix Suns to win the whole thing, you're kidding yourself. I think Phoenix is a must bet in the Western Conference. It has to be part of your betting portfolio. I understand. The plus 275, if you're a Experience futures better. You're thinking, man, that's awfully short. Folks, I'm just telling you, this is the last time you're going to get the plus 275. Right after Phoenix wins its first series, these odds are going to drop precipitously. Let me point out, too, that there was a fantasy going around. It's been punctured now. But there was a fantasy going around that the Los Angeles Lakers... We're going to somehow make the playoffs. And that these high seeds were in trouble. Because you were going to then be dealing with LeBron, who's still in the running for the scoring championship this year. And AD, who does have historical numbers when you break them out. Right? When he's playing. Right? Which is about, what, half the season? Well, anyway, there was the feeling that the Lakers were going to pose a major threat to these top teams in the Western Conference. I believe that, believe it or not, dampened the odds on teams like the Phoenix Suns. I believe gamblers looked at the Suns and they thought, man, you know, if the Lakers slip in and play the Suns, this is going to be dangerous. I don't, you know, I actually believe the plus 275 Bet ten dollars to win twenty seven fifty plus the return of your ten dollars. Right? I believe that prop would be far worse. Maybe a plus two hundred because you're dealing with a team that already has over sixty wins. If not for the Laker fantasy. Folks, the Lakers weren't that good. The Lakers are several games under five hundred. The Lakers never meshed as a team. Never. Certain players on the Lakers, right? Russell Westbrook, for example, are completely tone deaf about their own numbers, right? Why was he continuing to shoot threes? Right? LeBron James having a great year, redefining, literally setting the standard for excellent performance, for an older player. But let's face it, father time is unbeaten. LeBron in his 20s was a much better defender than LeBron is right now. Well, in any event, you don't have to worry about the Lakers. Folks, they're out. So let me ask the question. Who here is going to beat the Phoenix Suns in the playoffs? I would argue that because of their outside shooting, Golden State has a remote shot. But that's the word I'll use, remote. The Goliath in the Western Conference are the defending Western Conference champs, the guys who won it last year. The plus 275 might seem short now, Trust me, it won't seem short if you're dealing with the Western Conference Finals in which the Phoenix Suns would have home court advantage. My advice to you here, April the 6th, 2022, is whoever you think is going to win, just looking at your futures portfolio, and we'll deal with the Eastern Conference another time. I understand. There's some big names over there, right? Embiid is making a run at MVP. Giannis is making a run at MVP. Who here feels safe betting against Kevin Durant 
in playoff games. And of course, if you look at the numbers on Kyrie Irving, if his two-point shooting was just a little bit better, he'd be having in this year where he couldn't play every game and get a rhythm, he'd be having a 40-50-90 season. We'll deal with the East. Just understand, if you get a plus 275 on the Phoenix Suns right now, right here, right, just understand you'll be able to sleep a lot easier as these playoffs unfold. And should the Suns get to the NBA Finals, hell, if you have a plus 275 on one side of the aisle, you can hedge the play whoever comes out of the East. That's how I see it. This is the Goliath in the room, folks. Right? For some reason, we're overlooking a lot here. Right? Monty Williams, we're saying, oh, yeah, he did a good job. No, folks, this is a legendary job. This defense is legit. Few men in NBA history have scored 70 points in a game. Devin Booker is one of them. The team is young. They're loaded. They're experienced. They're performing. Folks, that defense is not going to go away. The plus 275, in my eyes, for them to win it all is a steal. I'm expecting the Phoenix Suns, quite frankly, to win the Western Conference. I'll hedge the play with Golden State. Right? Memphis is also a problem. But let's just say this year I'm just not prepared to pick Minnesota, Denver, the Clippers, or the Dallas Mavericks, or the Utah Jazz. At least not at this point. Maybe as the playoffs progress and peerings become more apparent and situations and injuries start to show themselves, my tune will be a little bit different. But right now in the West, in my opinion, there are two groups, the Phoenix Suns and everyone else. That's how I see it. Let me hear from you. I like the plus 275. Phoenix to win it all. Right? If they make it out of the West, then at that point I can hedge. That's how I see it. Let me hear from you. I hope you leave your comments in the comment section of this video. Thanks for stopping by.